Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam Ivey DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks. It's time! It's the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. It's also the first ever Dunce Cap of the Year. You, you watching this voted it. So I've got Christelle up here because when this knocks my entire show over to show you this, uh, she can put it all together again. Right here, let me do this ever so carefully. Uh, missing one. I'm going to show you the Dunce Cap Awards here very slowly because my camera is hooked up to my computer. This here. That's the two awards that are going to be going out. We have a Dunce Cap of the Year and a Dunce Cap of the Month. Uh, make sure that doesn't get unplugged right here. So basically, what you guys are waiting for is to know who won the Dunce Cap of the Year and who won the Dunce Cap of the Month and who won the contest. For those of you that don't know, there was a contest every month I send out the Dunce Cap of the Month. They get a Dunce Cap. And... They get a certificate, which you just saw. I don't have to get them printed. And as people pick their dumbest, what was the dumbest story of the year of all 12 that I had posted? I picked the radioactive silverware and I lost terribly. I cannot even count how badly I got beat statistically. Everybody picked the same one. So before I tell you who won the first ever Dunce Cap of the Year, um, here's everybody's name, but if you look real close, I didn't put one, two, three, four. I didn't number them in order. I didn't. So what I'm going to do is ask Christelle to pick a number, and one through twelve, and whatever number it is, you, I need you to get a hold of me in a PM when this happens, because you're going to get a bunch of passing time music. That's the band I'm in, and you're going to get your favorite charity promoted on this show for two weeks because you voted. Uh, is Christelle one to twelve, please? Hmm. Seven. Seven is Dallas. Dallas, you have won the contest. You will be getting passing nine music, and I need to know what your favorite charity is. It gets promoted on this show for the next two weeks. And uh, those of you that know, of course, uh, the Arcadia Grill joined us, and they get nonstop promotions as well. So who won the Dunce Cap of the Year award? Look at the colors. Can you figure it out? Yep. Read inside of this. Designed by Christelle with the correct crew, TCC, and the website. The winner of the Dove Cap of the Year, the stupidest move of the year, according to you, Dallas. Toddler dies in CPS captivity after being taken from marijuana smoking parents. For those of you that don't know, I'm not going to read the whole story again. I was sort of hoping this one would win because it's so depressing, but it is so unbelievably stupid that I see why you picked it. Uh, basically, uh, they took a child out of a home at the Texas Division of Child Protective Services and moved them into another house uh, because the parents of the toddler smoke weed. Well, the house that they moved them into had a history of tax drug abuse, and one thing led to another, and the girl is dead. Um, I, I want to say this went out in August or September, and it completely overshadowed every other dust cap that I did. So what I'm going to do is read you the Dunce Cap of the Year certificate. It's the green one that you saw a minute ago. It is a few months prior. I wrote you there at the Texas CPS received a Dunce Cap of the Month award from the correct views. The show invited all listeners to choose what the absolute most boneheaded, uppity, and otherwise completely stupid act was. And they, in overwhelming majority, chose you to win the first ever Dunce Cap of the Month award at Texas Division of CPS. That means uh, that many viewers, the whole world over, my winner was in Arkansas, the whole world over has looked upon you as the dumbest element of the last year. This says clearly that many in America find what you do to families to be sickening. And we hope that these two awards will awaken you to what total filth such actions are. Leave families alone, I wrote, to raise their children as they see fit. Nonconformity is not a form of abuse. It is a God-given right. 
Only a dunce would think otherwise. So Texas CBS, you'll be getting what will probably be, unless you do something else dumb, your last. Uh, one was sent from me, and one is being sent from my viewers. Guys, that brings us to the dunce cap of the month for this month, for 2014. Brand new year. What do we got? Well, I can tell you the ones that didn't make it. How many do I got here? I got nine. I only get through uh, usually five or six uh, segments per show, so I'm going to blow right through the first three. These three didn't make it, but they came close. The Telegraph, U.S. lawsuit demands legal personhood for chimpanzees. Thought that already happened when I, I watched Congress. I don't know. The U.S. Animal Rights Group has filed what it said is the first lawsuit seeking to establish the legal personhood of chimpanzees. The nonprofit Non Human Rights Project asked a New York State court to declare a 26 year old chip named Tommy a cognitively complex, autonomous legal person with the fundamental legal right to not be in prison. Look, I don't have any problem with not imprisoning animals. You know, that's fine. If that's, if that's what you believe is right and that's what you believe is uh, moral, then fine. I'm not going to be laughing at you. However, when you do this, you diminish what a person is. And when you diminish what a person is, you have Vietnam, you have China, you have Russia under Stalin, you have Hitler, you have massacres. When you bring down the level of what it is to be a person, when what you need to do is bring up the law so that it does what you want it to do without trying to make a monkey a person or a moron. Probably a very kind-hearted moron, but a moron. Uh, Mikhail Thalen had one that almost won. City presses charges against a veteran for raising chickens. <laughs> a Northwood Iowa man charged with violating a city ordinance that bans raising chickens within city limits is set to face trial late next week. Leo Hendrick, a war veteran, father and owner of Spartan Arms, moved his family to Northwood five years ago in the hopes to live a more healthy and self-sufficient life. Through hunting, gardening, and raising small animals like chickens and rabbits, Hendrick has become almost completely food independent. We were sick of corporate farming GMOs and pesticides, Hendrick told Story Leap, where he must be a terrorist. The price of groceries just keeps going up, and so this is really the only way for me and my family to survive. When you're not allowed to survive, you are allowed to bow towards uh, uh, laws that should not be legal. We'll get to that in a minute. Unfortunately, Hendrick, once, a city once city council learned of his family's chickens, a Worth County Sheriff deputy arrived at his home late August to present a letter demanding he remove all animals from his property within 10 days. I wasn't really surprised. I don't blame the sheriff's department, though, he said. There has never been a citizen complaint at all about my chickens or my gardens. It just comes down to the city complaining about it. His neighbors are rooting for him to be able to keep them. So that's another one that you might want to you know. That I do these so I expose the stupidity so that you can call these people that I'm telling you about and ask them why they're so stupid. I can't afford to send any more dumb cats out than I do. So. When I give you these stories, if they make you mad, write them, call them, let them know, hey, I thought this was a pretty jerk thing to do, and I'm mad about it. Um, this is from Daily Caller. Not a joke. Video called Forget About the Price Tag wins HHS grant prize for promoting Obamacare. Oh, yeah, just, just forget about the price tag. It's not a big deal. Isn't that the credit problem that led us into this to begin with? The Department of Health and Human Services has crowned a YouTube video entitled Forget About the Price Tag as the grand prize winner in a contest meant to encourage young people to sign up for Obamacare. Well, that's a great lesson to teach the kids. Buy it even if you can't afford it. Don't worry about the price. So I might want to call the Department of Health and Human Services. All right, guys. One more that I'm going to blow through. Then I'm going to cover the rest. Uh, Infowars.com. This, this came close to winning. Child suspended from the school for miming shooting an arrow. A 10-year-old, right, Steve or Watson, has been suspended from the school for threatening and threatened with expulsion for firing a make-believe arrow at a classmate, promoting a race group to step in and demand the incident be stricken from the record. Let me ask you something. Have any of you ever had a job want to know what your permanent record was? Reminds me of the Violet Femme songs. Nobody ever asks what your permanent record was. What did you do in third grade? The Rutherford Institute, a civil liberties watch group, watchdog group, 
has intervened in the case of Johnny Jones, a fifth grader at Southern East Middle School in Fondro, PA, who found himself in trouble after violating the school's zero policy on weapons by miming the action of shooting an arrow with a bow with only his hand. According to the report, Jones was in class when a classmate held up his folder like an imaginary gun and shot at him while he was retrieving a pencil from the teacher. When Jones drew back his strings of his imaginary bow and shot back, a girl in the class alerted the teacher. Well, that's great. They used to teach you know, kids to, to rat out their parents, too, in the, in the Third Reich. So that's wonderful to hear. So make sure you, know, you stand up with the Rutherford Institute on this. I've told you, you know, where you can look look these idiots up. Southeastern Middle School in Fawn Grove, PA. Imaginary arrows explode. Like I did. All right, guys. All of this is being brought to you by uh, the Bud K. Go to the mediaspeaks.com. Click on the Bud K ad. And when you do, look at something. They've got real arrows there, crossbows. They've got survival blankets for like $2. You will be happy with the things that you acquire at Bud K. And I'll tell you what. You'll be helping out the Media Speaks, too. It costs money to send these out. Every month I send them out. They go all over the U.S. And every penny you donate to us, it helps. The correct views of Hotmail.com is one way. And the more expedient way is to even go to the Mediaspeaks.com, click on Bud K, purchase something so they know that you picked it up from us. Guys, um, the last of the dots caps here before we lead up to who won for the month. Well, this is... BizPackReview.com. Absolutely clueless congresswoman stuns with Benghazi answer at town hall. Uh, Ann Custer almost won the Dunce Cap of the Month award. Listen to this. <coughs> it's truly difficult to know who is more clueless, Democratic Congressman Ann Custer or a New Hampshire voters who elected her to represent them in Washington. And what has to be the stupidest answer ever given to your question, including those horrible, painful to watch, so stupid they've gone viral answers given by pageant contestants. Custer, it seems, outdated. Proved that she is utterly useless as a member of the House of Representatives. Some media outlets were kinder and gentler to their coverage of Custer's ignorance. And Custer clumsily refused to answer a question on the Benghazi attacks during a recent town hall frantically looking at the moderator for assistance, the Daily Caller reported. But no, she didn't refuse. She didn't understand Benghazi, so she didn't. She couldn't answer. I don't have. It's a Senate thing. Uh, I don't think we have anything about it in the House. Um, that is what she said, and wouldn't finish reading the question she was handed, asking the House, asking about House Resolution 36, which is a bill to establish a select committee to investigate and report on the attack of the United States consulate in Benghazi, Libya. Thank God, it says, the stunned constituents in the audience who pressed her to answer, though, she stood there absolutely silent with a blank look on her face. And with an arrogance reserved for liberals who know not whereof they speak, she delivered what can only pray will come back to haunt her in re-election. Listen to this quote. This is why she almost won the dunce cap of the month. Well, I'm certainly not here to talk about it. We're here to talk about the Middle East. Crowd went wild. Friends? Kesha fans, those of you that maybe listen to the weekend, I know you're a little stupid. Drake fans, by all means. Um, Benghazi is Libya. And Libya, even though the Congresswoman doesn't know it, is the Middle East! We destroyed it, remember? All right, friends, um, Infowars.com, Adam Salazar wrote this. New York PD to roll out police state for Super Bowl. Um, the New York City State Police, the New York City State, that's Chris, that, I'm going to get that dunce cap. The New York City Police Department will deploy gunboats as well as armed officers with heavy weapons in the week prior to the Super Bowl. Efforts the department claims will protect the public, deter terrorists, and prevent them from conducting reconnaissance. Yeah, because they could never just drive the car through the front door of the arena and blow it up. I mean... This is theater, people. That's why I'm laughing. This is theater. Um, I go to concerts. If you're a psychopath, if you're a religious nutcase of any religion, if you're just a mean-spirited, evil person, this is, this is a show. This is ridiculous. They also plan to use radiation detectors. Well, great, because they don't use it to test our food. Well, for coming from Japan. 
canine teams and heavily visible Hercules foot patrols along with closed circuit TV cameras to thwart evildoers looking to rain on the Super Bowl festivities. It says, given that a majority of Americans are more concerned with Miley Cyrus in football than preserving civil liberties, it's no surprise that the NFL has come this far in acclimating the public to slavery, and I agree. Uh, two more before you get to the winner. Kit Daniels writes in her words, the Democrats persecute homeschooling parents. In a coordinated attack on families, which is where the uh, Texas got their second one from, a Democratic state senator in Ohio introduced a bill this month that requires parents to submit to a social services investigation, including background checks, before being permitted to homeschool their children. All right, guys, I say this all the time. Do me a favor. Look up what the Hitler Youth was. Do me a favor, too. Forget that he butchered millions of people. That's not what I want you to look it up for. Look up what the Hitler Youth was. Look up how the government would take people's children for any trumped up reason they can to indoctrinate them in the ways of the state and to get them to turn in their parents for any little thing. Look it up and then listen to this story. This is why I do these shows, people. I know the Dove's Cap of the Month is funny and I try to keep it humorous, but to the point. And I don't just mean the point on the hat or my head. Introduced by Senator Capri Cafaro, Senate Bill 248 effectively requires schooling parents to be licensed by the state through an application process that includes an investigation, background checks, and in-person interviews between uh, social workers and children, which the parents are not allowed to attend. Yeah, that sounds like America. That sounds like the land of the free. You're not allowed to attend a meeting that says whether or not you have the right that you already have to school your own children in the way that you see fit. Sounds like America to me. Sounds like you almost won a dust cap. The bill is breathtaking in its attempt to impose unreasonable government intrusion on Ohio families, says the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, which also called the bill the worst homeschooling law ever. So what you need to do is get a hold of these people and remember what I just told you. Right here, Senator Capri Cafaro. Get a hold of them. Let them know them will be getting your vote because they're dunces. Last of the runner-ups from Bright Bart. Atheists. Atheist posts vulgar video threatens to sue city over nativity scene in Florida. A bonehead atheist activist has posted a video on YouTube after the city of Deerfield Beach, Florida displayed a nativity scene near a firehouse. In the video, Chaz Stephen threatens to sue the city as he uses vulgar terminology to describe the images of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Well, that's kind. If he had done it to another religion, they would have had him uh, crucified. But, you know, he, he only insulted Christ, so nobody cares. And again, I don't care if you're an atheist. I care if you're an idiot. According to Circa, Stevens decided to sue Deer, Deerfield Beach over the nativity scene after it denied him permission to erect a festivist pole made of beer cans. The city reportedly had permitted Stevens' Festivus display in the past next to nativity scenes and menorahs, but this year decided that only displays reflecting the holidays could be erected. It says Governor Rick Scott says Circa allowed Stevens to replace the Festivus pole inside the Florida State Capitol, and Stevens posted a video of the construction. So he didn't even get denied. It just wasn't posted where he wanted it to be. Ridiculous. Guys, here it comes. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. <laughs> yep, the Dum Dee Dum Dee Dum Dee Dum Dee Dum Dee Award. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award is here, my friends. It is going all the way to Portland. Why is there mistletoe on it? Designed by Christelle. Why? Oh, also, uh, again, let me stress, uh, in both of these caps, no malice intended they are political satire. Why, Sam, is there mistletoe on the Duff Cap of the Month Award? Oregon girl barred from selling mistletoe, but told that it's okay to bag it. WRIC.com, driven by her budding entrepreneurial instincts, 
An 11 year old Oregon girl wanted to help her dad pay for her braces by selling mistletoe over the holidays, but she got tangled up in red tape instead. Madison Root, she's awesome, of Portland, they hit the downtown market on Saturday morning to sell the plants she had cut and wrapped herself from her uncle's farm in Newburgh, Oregon. Now, this is dated December 2nd. That means she'd been making these way back. You don't just wake up one day with mistletoe all made. This was something she thought of back when the sun was shining and the birds were singing. This is a prepared, intelligent, kind-hearted, very bright young lady, and this is what she got for all of that. <coughs> I felt like I could help my dad with the money, she told ABC News affiliate KATU News. But a private security guard hired by Portland Saturday uh, by Portland Saturday Market, that's the name of it, asked her to help selling to stop selling the mistletoe because city rules banning conducting business or soliciting at a park without proper approval and documentation. Chapter 10.12 of the Portland City Code. Let's remember city codes are not allowed to over trump your are not allowed to trump your constitutional rights, but I digress. Of the Portland City Code states that soliciting or conducting business includes the display of goods or descriptions or depictions of goods or services with the intent to engage any member of the public in a transaction for the sale of any good or service. The guard told Madison, it continues, that she could sell her mistletoe on the city sidewalk outside the park's boundaries. Well, that's as useful as uh, boobs on a doorknob but not in the market, or simply ask people for donations for her braces, she told Cato News. The guard told her she can beg if she wanted, but she can't sell the mistletoe, Root's father said. Um, and he told ABC News. He also said that Root does not want to encourage begging and wants people to earn their living, so she is keen with her high work ethics. I don't want to beg. I would rather work for something than beg, uh, Madison told Cato News. Don't be an American in America. I wouldn't think I'd have any problems because people are asking for money, people are selling stuff. This is a public place. However, vendors pay a rent uh, to vending booths and are scrutinized before they qualify. For the Portland Saturday Market official said, yeah, well, you wouldn't want to have, you know, subpar mistletoe. Die. Applying for a booth is a jury to process. I had to show samples of my jewelry to a panel of jurists. We have to pay to maintain our spot on the market, Vicky sees the owner and designer of Vicky Homemade Jewelry told ABCnews.com today. We're going to help nobody buy it. Um, friends, it's obvious. You told the girl to beg instead of letting her sell something she made and help her family with a good, classic work ethic. You win the dust cap of the month award. One more look at it. I'm going to read you their award here. Again, brought to you by the Arcadia Grill, located in downtown Canton. If you are in Canton, Ohio, make sure you go to the Arcadia Grill. This is what I wrote. The dust cap of the month award during the Christmas season. Many people look for ways to both display love and appreciation towards their families for all that they do for them. A remarkable girl named Madison Root did this very thing by wanting to sell mistletoe there in the Portland Saturday market to help her family pay for braces. However, you other fools decided that her act of maturity, strength of will, and even her foresight to make enough to be sold by Christmas season were all null and void when compared to the importance of a city code that should not even be. Rather than praise the girl who, in the age of greed, actually knows what a work ethic is, you found it wiser to suggest that she take up the legal work of begging. Since you Grinches, I wrote, find more honor in begging for handouts over working for a goal, and since you find more worth in what should be your legal city codes than you do in real progress, you add both the Portland Saturday Market and the Portland City Council both win this month's Dutch Cap of the Month award. Share it in good cheer. Yes. That's what it says, friends. It cost me a fortune to send these out, so do me a favor. Please donate to me at the correct views of hotmail.com. Starting a whole another year, we're going to be doing it again next year. If I get enough votes, uh, if I get enough donations to pay for these being sent out, I'll try to make it international. But it's going to cost a fortune to do that, so I'm going to need donations. 
Friends, your listener made the correct views. Thank you for doing so. Good night. God bless. And share these. Call these people that I've just told you did these stupid things. Because that's why I do that. Exposing stupidity is a step in the direction of stopping stupidity. Good night, friends. God bless.